Well, greetings once again. Uh, it's been a while. It's just that uh, the whole world kind of crumbled under my feet once again. It's kind of like uh, I had this jigsaw puzzle that had, you know, many thousands of pieces in it. And I had everything all put together. I could see almost a complete picture. And I was down to, you know, maybe 21 pieces or so left so that I would be able to understand the whole thing. And uh, as I was taking those last 21 pieces and putting them all together so I could just slap it on into that great big picture, it's like all the other pieces were <laughs> taken apart again and jumbled up. And I'm sitting there holding on to this little swath of 21 pieces or so, give or take, you know, put together. And that's all I had right now, is I'm 21 pieces. And uh, all the rest of the puzzle was completely scrambled up. And if you are one that's like me, that's searching, and you are finding certain things, understandings, coming to certain understandings, to certain things that become knowledge to you that are found within this book. You might understand what I'm talking about. It's uh, many times in my life and I, I've noticed that since my true walk toward the faith, my conscience had brought me onto this path. Uh, of course it came from Messiah and our Heavenly Father, but once I came to be aware that I was on this path, well it's like, you know, I I was walking up this here foothill and I got up to the top of the foothill and I turned around and I looked because of the understanding and the knowledge I was getting from these. It, that's what that foothill was and I turned around and I looked down and I, I seen all kinds of people just walking around there looking for the way just to get up on that little foothill but I thought I was at the top. I was at the precipice of all understanding and knowledge because I came to the true name and I understood it, and uh, I had stopped calling on Jesus and God, and started calling the uh, prophets and the kings of old and such by their true and actual names, but I, I didn't realize that this was actually driving a wedge into people's beliefs, and once I came to realize other people were coming up on that little, you know, that little foothill, that little precipice, well, I had to get a little bit deeper into wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge and the truth of the words that are within this book. The things that uh, Messiah has been leading me to come to understand. So once I discovered there were a bunch of people up there on that foothill with me, and they came to understand the same things I did, and that's where they, why they came up there and how they came up there. And I turned to go a little further when I whap, you know, boom, right there it is, this here sheer cliff, you know. And it goes up as high as the eyes can see, and it took, you know, months, years, sometimes, to get to the very top of that cliff. And I got a sure footing, and I turned around, and I look at all those people down there that finally coming up on that little foothill, you know, and some of them turning and realizing they got the sheer cliff, and I'm looking down, and I'm shouting out, hey, you ought to do this, and you ought to do that, so you could get up here and see what I do. Well, that's basically what occurred again, you know, I, I thought that I was getting pretty close, you know, and I'm kind of glad, you know, that I'm still as far away as the person that may never have heard about a Bible yet when it comes to certain things, but I'm now having to do something that I said I would never do. In fact, in some of the, you know, videos that I've already been led to bring out, I've, I've voiced many times that I, I would never preach in the name of Jesus, I'd never preach in the name of God, I've come to see, you know, that my father's name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahshua, and those that call upon them will be delivered. Now, it doesn't mean that people that are calling on Jesus and Lord and God and Adonai and Allah and, you know, many other names that they associate with the Creator and His righteous Son, it doesn't mean they're going to miss out on salvation. 
Okay, what, what it's speaking of is that there will be deliverance from the wickedness that's about to come on this planet. There's a lot of things that those that do call on the name of Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah will escape. But I'm not so much looking at the escaping part as I have been over the years looking for those just to believe in what is in these scriptures. And of course by doing so, and I alienated myself from being able to deliver a more pure message, and that's why I have to do what I said I'd never do. I'm going to start, you know, from this day on. And it's been, you know, a week, week and a half or so since Tabernacles has passed. And during Tabernacles, I was shown this one thing. And I don't want to be like Jonah, you know, with the uh, seaweed wrapped around my head, you know, being vomited up on some distant shore, you know, by a big old giant fish, you know. And I fought against it and it, before, and I fought against it for many years, but now I'm faced with it, and it's not out of any kind of uh, denying of Messiah or our Heavenly Father, but it's just like the Apostle Paul said, the things that I do not want to do is the things that I do, you know? And if you're not keeping the laws and commandments, if you're not really, truly searching, well, you'll never come to that understanding that Paul came to. These things are reserved for those that actually do believe in what is in these scriptures. So, I think I'm going to name this uh, series here something like, uh, What did Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And what are you going to do about it? Okay, something of that sort is what I desire to... Uh, name this series, and the reason being, you know, Yahweh's name and Yahshua's name are found very seldom within, you know, most of the Bibles that are available today on the market. There are a few Bibles that have Yahweh and Yahshua's name in there, but, you know, out of the billions of people on this planet, you know, there's not that many that have that book. But there are billions of people that do believe that Jesus is, you know, the one that's going to save them. And that God and Lord is the one that's going to empower them. And I'm not going to drive that wedge anymore. I'm glad you believe that way. Uh, so the one thing that I do know is that you don't even know what Jesus said. Okay, you sit here and you believe that you're saved, that you have this Holy Spirit, that uh, you have been chosen out of all the things of this world because of your disobedience to what the Messiah says, and you deny the words that I was speaking in many of my videos that I really didn't want to bring to begin with, but I was led to bring those as well. And today we're going to ask you a question. You say that you know Jesus, that you know God, that you believe Jesus, that you believe God, and you deny Yahshua and Yahweh because their name's not in here, but the name of Jesus is. So let's see what Jesus says, and, and let's not forget, in any part of this book in the so-called New Testament, the things that the disciples and the apostles did write about were the teachings that were delivered unto them by what they call the Jesus nowadays that's written in here. And the letter J is only around 300 years old, so I do have this real problem even letting this name of Jesus leave my mouth, but... What's the sense of me speaking 10,000 words in a language that you don't understand when I can speak 10 words about Jesus? And because you do accept your Jesus for the most part, maybe you'll even hear the things that our true Messiah said. Okay, so what I'd like to first show is in uh, 1 Corinthians, and it's uh, chapter 1, verse 21. And it says, For since the wisdom of... I have such a adversity to, to preach this way, and that's exactly what I'm having to do now is preach. Before I used to share, but because 
nobody really knows. I mean, so few people know what the Jesus and this book even said, or the gods and such, you know, and here I've got to voice those names in order for some to come to understand and maybe even accept the words that are being spoken by these deities, you know, these uh, titles and such, but I just pray for the strength to do what I'm being led to do. So here in verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 1 it says, For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So this isn't the ones that don't believe that the message is going to be helping out. This is the message being spoken of right now, and I understand, you know, there's a lot of things that I've done that I've reflected in the scriptures, and the scriptures were written showing I would do these things, not just me, but the others of the 144,000 as well, would be doing these things, and then there will be a great number, no man can count, that many things in their lives too will match up to what is right in here already written. So this foolishness of preaching, and I've been told I'm preaching foolishness many times, and actually I was because I was preaching to those who thought that they believed, but, you know, or were saved, but what they believed wasn't things that will save them, because they didn't believe what the Messiah had said, though they believe the Messiah, this Jesus, is going to save them. Well, let's just see if he's going to or not, and let's discuss some of the things. I mean, it's very important, you know. One thing that people all across the world know is that we're supposed to test and try the spirits, okay? And that's what I'm doing with you right now, is I want to test and try the spirit that you've accepted within you, so that you can see whether or not you actually know our Creator or not, or know His Son, or know Him both, and I'll guarantee you that most everybody, or absolutely everybody, born on the planet today fails this test the first time. It's not much different than in the Matrix. You know, when Neo jumps off the top of that building and he falls straight down and bounces off the road a couple times, or, you know, gets his bloody nose and bloody mouth. But as was said, you know, nobody passes the test the first time. So hopefully when you find out you fail, when you hit the ground, you'll bounce back up a couple times and you'll get back up and start walking and, you know, believe what the book says. And I'm even going to use the Jesus and the gods and the lords to bring forth this that I don't want to do. But anyway, in 1 Yachinan or John, chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Yes, the world is full of them. There's over 40,000 different churches out there today, all preaching a different message, all claiming they all have salvation. But, you know, which means that two of them could not be right if they're all preaching a different message. One of them could be right, you know, but... All 40,000, no, they all could be wrong, and they are wrong, you know, because none of them believes what's actually written in this book. And it says in verse 2, By this you know the Spirit of God, that every spirit that confesses that eh, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming, and now is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And I do know he who is in me, and I also know he or she who is of the world. And everybody likes to believe, and they, they totally do believe, that they know everything, that what they believe about this Jesus is going to save them. No matter what they do, they're going to be saved in their Jesus. But this here test came from the disciples' learnings and being taught in the Scripture, and I'd like to give you this test. 
and when you fail it, don't give up. Please don't give up. My next series that I'm doing, well, this series here that I'll be doing, we're going to be going through a lot of things that the Jesus said right in this book. Okay, so I'm not going to deny this Jesus any longer, so I'm just hoping that you will stop denying what this Jesus, supposedly this Jesus, the words that he said you must do to acquire salvation. And when you fail this test, I'm hoping that you will come back to this and see the other videos I'm led to be bringing in hopes that you might be able to pass this test. And when you pass this test, then everything will change for you. But in a positive manner, even though all hell may break loose in your life and you may end up finding out what it's talked about when it says that, you know, when the Messiah comes, he's bringing a sword to divide. He's not coming to bring peace. He's bringing a sword to divide mother against daughter and so on and so forth because the truth will separate you from this world exactly as it's separated me from this world and those that are of this world are separated from me. They don't like coming around me anymore, uh, but I'm not giving up my faith and the truth that I know is within these words. And I'd like you to take this test now, you who say you know and you love Jesus and that Jesus loves you and you love God and Lord and, and all these other things, you know, and that they know you. Well, let's see if they do and if you actually know them, okay? So it says here in uh, First Yach and Honor John, chapter 2, start at verse uh, 1, it says, My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. Okay, so that you may not sin. Now that's what the disciples were taught by Messiah. Messiah, when he healed somebody, he told them, go and sin no more. So here they're writing this, hoping that you will not sin. And sin is a transgression of the law. It's a breaking of the law. It's living a law of lawlessness, as shown in uh, this very same book here, uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. I'll read it for you here, uh, if I can find the page. 3 verse 22, okay, 3 verse 4 says, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. So if you're not keeping the laws and the commandments, you're living lawlessness. And that's what the disciple here is writing about in First Yachanan, that these things that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, okay, and this isn't sinning on purpose, this is an ignorant sin. If anyone sins after you come to the knowledge of the truth, it best be because you were ignorant about what you're doing and were deceived. And it says we have an advocate with the Father, the Jesus Christ, the righteous, okay? Now this is the test for you. And he himself is the appropriation for our sins. It is him that can give us this acquittal, this pardon for doing things that we didn't know were wrong. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it because we don't want to sin. Okay? And sin is being lawless. It, it's breaking the commandments. It's breaking the laws. And we don't want to do this. And if we do and we realize it, we can call out, and you can ask your Jesus, I'll ask Yahshua because I know who he is. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be fair here and say, look, you know, if you call on Jesus, you will also be forgiven if you do the things that Jesus tells you to do in this book. Okay, you will have salvation if you do it. And if you do it, you may come to the understanding of the importance of the names as well. And then you'll understand what I've been preaching before. Sharing. Now I'm preaching, and I don't like to preach because those that preach, you know, have a higher condemnation when they're wrong, and I don't want to. I know I'm wrong in a lot of things, you know, but I don't preach things that I know I'm wrong with. I find out much later that the beliefs I once had were wrong, and that's what bothers me, okay, because I don't want to teach you anything that we're going to be wrong in. But I have no choice but to teach you in what Yahshua, or what the Jesus says to do in this book. Okay, so we're talking about the Jesus now. So if you believe in the Jesus, let's see what things he and the disciples bring forth for you to test the spirits to see if they are of the Jesus or not. Okay? And he himself is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. 
for the whole world. Verse 3, And by this we know we have come to know him. By this here, what's coming up in the next two or three verses, you're going to see whether you do actually know the Jesus or not. Okay? Because the spirits out there, if they're not of the Jesus, they're of the devil. Okay? Boy, it's hard to say. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Do you keep the commandments? That's how you know him. Is that it right here? And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Verse 4. The one who says, now if you say you know him, you know the Jesus, you know the God and the Lord, if you say these things, then verse 4 is going to show you something really, really difficult. Because you're not going to want to believe that you never did believe. But it's true. The one who says, I have come to know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar. So if you're not keeping the commandments and you're wearing a condom out there so you have protection while you fornicate and commit adultery, you're a liar. <laughs> you don't know him. I don't care how many Jesuses you call on or how many lords and gods you call on, when you unroll that condom to commit a sin of lawlessness because you're told not to do these things, but you're doing it in the name of your God and your Lord and your Jesus, it's because you don't know him. You don't know this Jesus that you profess. says, the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And the reason the truth is not in him or you is because the truth is the law. Okay? You look it up yourself in, in Proverbs and Psalms. Truth is the law. It says all the way through the scriptures. You know, the lamp to my feet. Read about it. The law is a lamp to my feet. The truth is a lamp to my feet. The one who says I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him is the love of Yahweh truly. Okay? The love is the keeping of the commandments as you can see in Second John, I mean, or Yachanan. This is the very same guy writing the second one and he says here in verse 4, he says, I have no greater joy than this to hear of my children walking in the truth. Just like it's saying over here to test the spirits with in First Yachanan 2. It says, Beloved, oh, that's the third one, sorry. We're over here and uh, starting verse uh, uh Five will have it says uh, in Second Yachanan it says and now I ask you, lady, not as writing to you a new commandment, but the one which we had from the beginning that we love one another. Cool idea. Everybody loves. They say all across the world you hear what is love, love, love. All these different songs. Everybody loves. There's things on commercials to show love and love your brother, love your neighbor, love this, love that. But he says that we love one another. And then in verse 6 it says, And this is love. What's love? This is love. That we walk according to his commandments. Yeah, that's love. And like it says, if you don't keep his commandments, you have no love in you. Nor do you have any truth in you. You're a liar if you don't keep the commandments because love is the keeping of the commandments. Like I said, that we love one another. And this is love. That we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment. Just as you have heard from the beginning, from Adam and Eve all the way through, that you should walk in it. So back here in verse 4 it says, The one who says, I have come... Or, yeah, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments as a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, who keeps the commandments, who lives by every word that's within this book, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. Yeah, if you keep the commandments and the laws, then the love in you has been perfected. 
is perfect. Just like in Matithi, I believe it's chapter 5, last verse in that uh, uh, chapter, it talks about, you know, that you are commanded to become perfect. And yet you got preachers all over the world saying, you can't come to perfection, you can't be perfect. Well, of course not, because they're teaching not to keep the commandments. Because why? They're liars and there's no truth in them. There's no light in them at all. For whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. So if you're not keeping the commandments, then you are not in him. When you keep the commandments, then you'll be able to say, by the keeping of his commandments, I know I am in him. And he is in me. And I have love. And the love is being perfected. That you can have. Okay? You who seek the Jesus and deny the Yahshua and everything that someone says after they bring up the name Yahshua, you think that it's absolutely incorrect for you to listen to anything that's being said, but now you're listening to what the Jesus in this book said and the Jesus' disciples. So please take these things to heart. Verse 6, And the one who says he abides in him, in Yahweh, in, uh, in God, in Jesus, if you say you abide in your God and in your Jesus and in your Lord, then you ought yourself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Now you won't find anywhere in this book where the Jesus sinned ever. Which means that he did not break the commandments or the laws because if he did, then he would have been lawless just like uh, First Yachanan chapter 3 and uh, verse 4 says that sin is lawlessness the Jesus never was lawless. The Jesus never sinned. So if you are to walk exactly as the Jesus walked, then you too got to stop sinning. You too got to start keeping the commandments or you'll never ever pass the test that tests and tries the spirits that are walking in you. Think about it. So... Please wait for the next uh, little uh, video that I'm being led to bring. It won't be long from now, I'm hoping. I hope that I'll be submissive and uh, bring out these things that are necessary if you are truly seeking salvation. If you're truly seeking to put your trust in the Jesus, well, I'm going to show you, because I will show it exactly what the Jesus says and the things that you've been disobedient in. So until then, I say peace, and yes, I mean it. Let's have peace by keeping the laws and the commandments, by putting your trust in the words that the Jesus is speaking of in this book, and the gods. And uh, let's pull our hearts together, our spirits together, and become one in the body of Messiah. I mean, that's all that we're expected to do in these last days. So I'm going to fight against, you know, ignorance, and I hope to be able to show you the truth to where you can accept it, to where I can stop preaching or teaching these things. I despise teaching. I despise preaching because when I'm wrong, it hurts me worse than when I discover that I'm wrong in the things that I shared. And I've been wrong in trying to primarily use the name of Yahshua and Father Yahweh when you're putting your trust in Jesus and God. So let's get back to the basics. Let's see what the Jesus and the gods have told you to do and whether you do them or not. And if not, maybe you'll have a change of your heart and you'll start to do the things that your Jesus tells you to do. So, what did Jesus do? What will Jesus do? And why aren't you doing it? Think about it, please. Peace, and I mean it, start keeping them commandments.